Thank you for attending this demonstration of the landed cost functions in Microsoft Dynamics. In order to demonstrate these landed costing functions, I'm going to place two purchase orders on two overseas suppliers. I'm going to then create an import shipment that consists of those two purchase orders. And I'm going to manage and receive that shipment into a warehouse. And I'm going to enter purchase invoices for the two suppliers, and these are obviously the direct costs of those items. And I'm going to enter a purchase invoice for the landed cost of those items on, the, on that import shipment. Then I'm going to apportion those landed costs. And then I'm going to look at the item master file of one of those items to show you how the system handles those direct and indirect costs. So to do this, let's go to Microsoft Dynamics. This is the Microsoft Dynamics Role Center. And this is the Role Center for a purchasing agent. So the idea of the Role Center is that all the information and all the functions that the person needs to do their job every day is either on the Role Center or one click away. So for this purchasing agent, I'm going to click Purchase Orders and I'm going to enter a purchase order for an overseas supplier. Now I've set up two overseas suppliers in this database, Overseas Supplier 1 and Overseas Supplier 2. So we'll choose Overseas Supplier 1. And today we're going to be purchasing some soccer balls. So I'm just going to do this quick search of soccer balls and you'll see that I've got three soccer balls in my database. I'll choose the first one first and I'll do a quantity of 10. I'll also just do that same search again to get that second one and I'll put 10 in there. So that's 10 of the Nike, 10 of the Adidas and you'll see the, the costs there. Now those costs are in US dollars. The status of this purchase order is open. In order to tell the system that this purchase order has been sent, I just need to press release and you'll see that status change. I'll also place that second purchase order now on that second supplier. So overseas supplier number two. Um, again, I'll just search for that soccer ball. So I'll just place that third, third soccer ball here. And uh, wants me to put a cost in, so I'll put $9 again. Uh, 10 soccer balls, in this case $9, and this is US dollars. I'm going to release that. And that's it, they're my two purchase orders on my two overseas suppliers. Now I'm going to create an import shipment. So I'm going to use the warehouse receipts functions in Microsoft Dynamics to do that, and I'm going to create a new warehouse receipt. Now I'm just going to tell the system that the stock on this import shipment is going to be coming into my blue warehouse. Obviously you can have as many warehouses as you want, but uh, I'll just use the blue one for this. And I'm just going to put in a, uh, a vessel name where the shipment's on and some containers. I'll, uh, I'll use a number of threes here to identify this particular shipment. Let's use FedEx and the shipping method is free on board. The status of this shipment will say is loading. Some sort of unique uh, shipment number I'll put up here, so I'll put those threes. And we expect this shipment to leave, let's say, on the 20th and arrive on the 27th. And we expect this stock that's going to be on this shipment to come into our warehouse, say, on the 29th. Okay, so that's just setting up some of the basic information about this import shipment. The most important aspect of, of course, is to tell the system what purchase orders, and even more importantly, what items within those purchase orders are going to be on this shipment. So I'm going to use this function of get source document. This shows us all purchase orders that are waiting to be put on shipments. Now I'm just going to get that first purchase order. Now that first purchase order had those two <coughs> line items here of the so Nike soccer ball and the Adidas soccer ball. If for example, one of these wasn't coming in on this shipment, I could right click and delete that line. Otherwise, otherwise I could also say, um, say if only five were coming in as opposed to ten and those other five would be coming in on a later shipment, I could do that. But I'll just keep it as is for the moment and I'll just select that second purchase order as well. So you'll see here that this import shipment is consolidated of two purchase orders from two different supplies and a number of line items. As well as realizing that my database here is quite a way in the future, these due dates, other due dates that were on those initial purchase orders, were automatically allocated to those purchase orders based upon the standard lead times that are usually expected. But now that we know a bit more accurate information about when this stock is going to come into the warehouse, we want to update these purchase orders. So I'm just going to come to this function here called Update Expected Receipts, and when I press that, 
you'll see that that 29th of the 9th has now flowed through to those line items. Now that has affected those line items all the way throughout the system. So for example if a customer rings up wanting to know when you're going to have these soccer balls in stock your customer service agents will actually have the updated ETA information. The production manager if this was raw material would know when this would be in stock so his production could use it. So let's just say some time goes by and um, we go through the statuses maybe we get another another update and when we actually expect the stock and again we can update that again so everyone in our organization knows when that stocks going to come in but then we obviously get to a time where this stock comes into our warehouse now Microsoft Dynamics is very comprehensive warehousing control so um, maybe things like the system telling your warehouse workers where to put stock based upon um, optimal locations and cross docking and things like that or maybe for mobile handheld devices but let's just say from simplicity point of view we're just going to post this so we're just telling the system that this these line items are now in stock and can now be used throughout the organization we do not need to wait until the final costs of these line items are, are known this can now be delivered by if, if these items are waiting um, if there are deliveries waiting for these items, or if there's production orders that are waiting for these items, it can be used now. The stocks can, the, the costs can be finalised later, and the correct costs will then be traced back to these initial items. So, I'll just press OK to this. So once I press OK, this will now disappear and go into the posted area for audit trial purposes. So we're now at the point where the stock is now in, but we don't have those final costs yet. So to do that, I'm going to raise some purchase invoices. So let's do the first two invoices for those first two supplies which are probably the more easier ones in the landed costing environment and so that's the supply now I could type in the lines manually here but instead because we know this purchase invoice is for item on one particular um, import shipment I can use this function here choose that import shipment and it was that 333 press OK this is just telling us that there were multiple suppliers on that import shipment which is great but the only ones that are going to come on the only line items that are going to come on to this purchase invoice are the ones that relate to this overseas supply number one you'll notice here that we've got the US dollar amount and the Australian dollar amount let's for demonstration sake say that the Australian dollar changed which is probably very likely and let's say that it got a bit stronger against the US dollar so I'll make it uh, from 130 to 110 press OK and you will see now instead of being the $12 range they've come down to in the $10 range let's put in a purchase invoice number so and when we press post these direct costs have now been finalized look at that I've done that number before so we'll put another few sevens on that press post that's been finalized it's good to see that control there of uniqueness and let's also place that similar purchase order for that overseas supply number two let's grab that same import shipment and bring in those line items again let's just update the foreign currency because there's probably been a change between placing that purchase order initially and the purchase invoice when you actually know those costs so again that's much closer to parity than it was before we'll add a purchase invoice number and press post so they're the direct cost of the stock looked after but of course in the landed costing environment we have other costs that we need to uh, consider now I have a shipping agent in my database here ABS shipping agent that I use a fair bit and I've used him for this shipment and because I use this shipping agent a lot I know what the ship a shipping agent usually invoices me for so in this case he invoices me for he or she invoices me for freight duty cartage insurance and obviously input tax credit here as well if for some reason that was changed we can again delete that particular line or add lines if there are other costs on there it doesn't matter it's very flexible in that way and let's say on this particular invoice there was ten dollars of, of uh, freight twenty dollars of duty $30 of cartage and $40 of insurance and let's say $100 of uh, that input tax credit okay 
so that's reflecting the invoice that we have at hand we might put in that uh, invoice number but now we need to tell the system what items in what purchase orders should we be applying these costs to so again I can choose that shipment and I can just very quickly tell the system that all these costs are on that shipment and when I press this allocate landed cost apportionment it's okay the system has now allocated these 10, 20, 30, 40 dollars based upon particular apportionment methods that I've allocated. So for weight, uh, sorry, for freight, weight is the one I've used for duty, duty for cartage amount, and for insurance, I've used volumes. And they're the standard ones there, and obviously you can do it manually as well. But just to show you how that the system has allocated that, I can click that. Um, this little one there and you can see how the system has allocated this ten dollars of freight so twenty percent to the Nikes, the fifty percent to the Adidas and thirty percent to the soccer ball so it's allocated two, five and three. If I go to the uh, volume one you'll see that the forty dollars of insurance that it's been allocated by volume has been allocated twenty nine point four percent to the Nike soccer balls, fifty eight point eight percent to the Adidas so on and so forth with the, which equates to the eleven dollars seventy six um, for the Nikes and 23.53 and so on and so forth. And once we're happy with those allocations we can press post. Now let's have a look at the item master files of these items that we were dealing with today. I have a quick filter set up of my soccer items here and let's just drill down to our Adidas soccer ball. You can see we have 571 on hand. I'll just drill down to that. Now, these are all the stock movements for this Adidas soccer ball. And the one that we just dealt with there is down here for that $150.76. But I'm just going to drill down on that $150.76 to show you how that was made up. And this gives you a real understanding on how the system works in this area. Initially, when we placed that first purchase order on that overseas supplier, we were expecting the cost to be $125.50. When we received the purchase invoice, we reversed that initial cost and put in what we found, what we knew to be the final cost. And obviously that was less because, as you remember, the Australian dollar went up between pay, placing the purchase order and receiving the purchase invoice. Then to this $105.72, we added the 5, the 6, the 10, and the 23 for freight, duty, cartage, insurance when we had that, um, the shipping agent invoice. And those figures all add up to that $150.76. So what we just did there was that we placed those two purchase orders on two overseas suppliers. We created that import shipment and all the information about that import shipment we put onto one particular form. Then we managed that shipment, then we received that shipment into stock. At a later date, we entered purchase invoices for those two suppliers to reflect the direct costs of those line items that we brought in on that import shipment. Then we entered a purchase invoice for those landed costs. We apportioned those landed costs and then we looked at those item costings to see how that final cost was built up from both direct costs and those landed costs. The major four benefits that our clients find from this landed costing functionality is firstly that centralised and easy shipment management. Having one location to manage those um, all the different attributes of an import shipment makes it very easy to use. The second is that efficient stock ETA information distribution. As soon as you know when the stock's going to come in or any updates to the ETAs, the whole organisation knows. So great for customer service, great for production planning and so forth. A big benefit is that no need to wait for final costs to use that stock. So as soon as the stock is in the, in the warehouse, it can be delivered to clients, it can be used in production, because the stock costings, once they've been done at a later date, will actually go back and reflect those actual um, inventory items. And the last thing is that accurate and appropriate stock costings. So actually having a logical and easy to apply way to get those landed costs, those indirect costs, to be allocated to those inventory items. This functionality really provides efficiencies in this landed costing area and at the end of the day through better reporting, through better 
accurate stock costings, better decision making in all area, areas of the business because you know what the exact gross profit on your sales are, you know how much your stock is costing. If you wish to investigate Microsoft Dynamics further, please don't hesitate to contact Hands-On Systems on those contact details you see in front of you, or f please feel free to browse our website at www.handson.com.au. Thank you for your time.